Hello everybody and welcome to this short video on going through a couple examples of the Poisson distribution and I hope I don't have any native French speakers out there that are laughing their heads off at my horrible pronunciation of that. <clears throat> Most of us Americans will just call it the poison uh, distribution but it is actually a French mathematician who figured it out and it's pronounced Poisson or something along those lines. But anyhow Here's a typical example. <clears throat> they tell us that 20% of the cars passing through a school zone are exceeding the speed limit by more than 10 uh, miles per hour. And then they ask us using the Poisson formula, find the four decimal places, the probability that in a random sample of 100 cars passing through the school zone, exactly 27 will exceed the speed limit by more than 10 miles per hour. Now, it was very nice of this question to tell us to use the Poisson formula. <clears throat> How would we recognize it otherwise? Well, you should at least recognize that it's binomial in nature, right? And in anything that's kind of binomial has, you know, two options, yes or no, speeding or not speeding kind of thing. Then you need to think, okay, well, it's either a binomial or it's the poison distribution because those are the, really the only two that we deal with. Well, the binomial always has a set number of trials. Right? So in this case, a random sample of 100 cars would be our set number of trials. And then they want to know that exactly 27, that's our number of successes, will um, exceed the speed limit. So it does have a flavor of a binomial. And if they didn't say they used the, the Poisson formula, you could really think about this as being uh, a binomial. The Poisson distribution instead of looking at you know a fixed number of trials as being um, a subset of a larger set you know normally a fixed number of trials would be something like um, an assembly line is uh, churning out things churning out cars if you want and you're going to choose a hundred cars at random and test them for defects you know that kind of thing whereas the Poisson distribution looks at events that happen over a time period and so this whole 20% of the cars passing through a school zone are exceeding the speed limit. That has the, the feeling that, you know, they're passing through a school zone over a certain time period. Because if you, you know, drive through school zones, you know that the miles per hour for a school zone is brought down only during certain time periods of the day. So that's kind of a clue. But I think really, honestly, if it didn't say to use it, you could make an argument that it would fit either one. But we're going to do the, the Poisson. Okay. Now, to do it by hand is actually pretty easy. The formula for a Poisson distribution is really straightforward and uh, pretty basic to use. Right? So you have this Greek uh, letter lambda. That's a little blurry. Maybe I'll make it a little less big. And lambda always just um, designates your um, average number of successes. And in this case, they tell us that 20% speed, and we took a sample of 100. So obviously, we take 20% of 100, and that gives us an average of 20. And then we raise that to x. Well, what is x? x is always the number that we're testing against. And in this case, we want to know exactly 27. So that's raised to the power of 27. Then e is our good old friend e, you know, the 2.71 blah, blah, blah number. And then you raise that to the negative lambda. So that's the negative 20. And then on the bottom, it's x, 27, factorial, right? This is an x, like it's excited. It's factorial. So you got to do 27 times 26, da, 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 da. And you can do all of this in really any scientific calculator pretty easily and get this solution. However, a lot of us don't want to have to deal with technology, or I'm sorry, with doing it by hand. So why not do it in technology instead? So if you have a TI graphing calculator, it's actually really easy. You just hit second vars, which brings you, you can barely see it, the blue is distribution, brings you to the distribution menu. And if you page up, because Poisson's near the bottom, you can see you have the Poisson PDF and the Poisson CDF. And you'll see that you this pattern holds. You got binomial PDF, binomial CDF, geometric PDF, geometric CDF. The PDF functions are 
the precise. They're, they're, I, I say P for precise so students kind of remember it. It really stands for the probability distribution function. And then the CDF stands for the cumulative distribution function. But I, I tell my students, think of it as the precise distribution function. Those are the ones you use when you want to know the probability of exactly something happening, right? A precise answer. And then the CDF, cumulative, right? Cumulative means you accumulate something. That's when you want probabilities of less than or greater than, right? And we use that, and then we have to do its uh, complement if we're looking for a greater than, because the CDFs are always less than. So if you if you did a Poisson CDF of 27, for instance, it would calculate the probability of 27 or fewer cars, right? So it does the case of no cars plus the case of one plus the case of two plus the case of three, all the way up to and including the case of 27. So if you wanted the probability of 27 or more, you would have to do the CDF of 26 because it would do 0 through 26, then you would subtract that from 1, and that would leave behind the 27 or more. So the CDF, the only tricky part about that is figuring out what your x is depending on what the question is. But this first one was easy because they just want to know exactly 27. So we're going to use the PDF. Now, if you have the fancy 84, it gives you this nice little um, kind of input screen where it asks you the question. It says, hey, what's lambda? And you go, oh, well, that's easy. Lambda is 20. And it says, what's your x value? Well, that's easy. That's 27. And then you paste it, and it puts it into the formula for you. If you have an 83 or older, it'll just put the formula on the screen with an open bracket, an open parenthesis here. And you just have to know, and I would just put it in your notes, that the first number you give it is lambda, then you put a comma, then the second number you give it is x, then you close the parentheses, and you hit enter. And there's the answer according to our calculator, which we can see is the exact same answer that we get from the formula. Nice and simple and easy, right? That's the idea of technology is it makes our life a lot easier, right? We don't have to um, mess around with formulas. Well, let's say you don't have a TI graphing calculator. Well, good news, you can use Excel. And all you have to do is go equals and just type in POI and it'll bring up, it'll have just Poisson by itself if you have an older version of Excel. If you have the newer version, it's Poisson dot distribution. So you double click on that. And then the nice thing is down here, it tells you what it needs. It needs X and then it needs the mean and then it needs to know if it's cumulative. So this one is in reverse of the calculator, right? So it wants X first, which is 27, then the mean, which is 20, and then it has this cumulative thing. And you can see that True makes it a cumulative distribution, and false makes it a probability mass function. Remember, we talked about it's the PDF versus the CDF. So if you choose false, it becomes a PDF. So you double-click on that, and then you hit Enter, and there's that same answer. Okay, And it's the same thing in Google Sheets. Well, I mean, it's the same idea in Google Sheets. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the exact same formula in Google Sheets. Let's just start typing in, and then it comes up, right, the Poisson distribution. So we can double-click that. And the, and the bad thing about it is um, it, it, it gives you the idea to, to, like, select a range. So it doesn't just, so it could do it on raw data, basically. But it doesn't give you the um, instructions as to what to put in if you're just going to put in the statistics. So let's just assume that it's just like Excel, because they tend to do that. Most of the Google functions, they model them after Excel, which would be uh, X, right, then the mean, and then we have to do false, because we want this to be a PDF and not a CDF. And you can see it's already telling us what the answer is going to be, which is the correct answer. Okay? So those are the three ways we can do that in technology, very, very simply. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so here are three more typical you know, questions that we come across a lot. The first thing you want to do with the English is, is change it into math symbols, right? At most, 7 means that P, we're looking for P of X, such that X, X is less than or equal to 7. And that's nice, because that's exactly what a CDF does, right? A CDF does 0 up to 
and including an endpoint. Okay, how about between um, 14 and 19? So that's the probability where 14 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 19. Now, you might, you might be asking, how do we know it's less than or equal to when it just says 14 to 19? <clears throat> well, you have to kind of know what your book tends to do. This particular book tends to... Um, default to inclusive, right? So whenever it lists a range, the default is inclusive. And if it doesn't want to include the endpoints, it will specifically say exclusive or excluding the endpoints. Your textbook might be the other way around where its uh, default is exclusive. And then those would be, you know, strictly less thans and not equals. And if it wanted it to include the endpoints, it would say inclusive. So you just kind of have to pay attention to what your textbook or your instructor does as kind of the uh, standard, right? And then at least is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 32, right? At least, which is going to equal 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 31. You see how that works? Because we want to set it up in terms of the CDF. Because if we have the numbers 0 through 31, that's what this gives us. And we take those away, then what's left is 32 and on, which is what we want, right? So we need to do the same thing here. We need to turn this into less thans. But we want 14 through 19. So we basically want 0 through 13 to be gone, right? And then we want 14 through 19. And then we also want 20 and above to be gone. So we need to figure out how that works. So how about if we do a CDF of 19? That gives us 0 through 19, right? And, and now the 20s and on are, are not being looked at. Then if we do a CDF of 13, that equals 0 through 13, right? And if we subtract them, if we take the top one minus the bottom one, what will be left over will be the 14 through 19. So now we know we basically need uh, the CDF of 19 minus the CDF of 13. And that's how we do in-betweens. Now, if you have a uh, fancier technology, you can act, it can actually do what are called betweens, right? It can do these for you. But uh, those usually use, uh, you need like a, a website uh, to do that. We're going to do it with just R3. So the first one, very simply, if we're going to do it in the calculator, right, we got to go back second bars, go to the CDF, we still have the same lambda of 20, only now we're doing the CDF of up to and including 7. We run that, and we get this tiny number, right? 7.7 .7 times e to the negative 4, which basically ends up being... Right, 7.7 .7 times e to the negative 4. Well, if we write that out, 7.7 .7 e to the negative 4 means 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 4, which means you move the decimal place four times. So 1 and then three zeros in front of it. So this becomes 0, 0, 0, 7, 7. And then, of course, since they told us to round to four decimal places, we need to round to this decimal, and the seven makes it an eight. And that's why that answer is eight. Okay. If we wanted to do it in Excel, it's the same thing, right? Equals Poisson distribution. And then, of course, Google Sheets, the exact same thing. X is now seven. Our mean is still 20. And now, cumulative is true. 
and there it is and we can see that it would round to 0.08 in fact we could even save ourselves some time and make these list everything in four decimals and it does the rounding for us cool huh okay let's look at the in between or we have to do two of them and i'm going to do this one in excel first because um, it makes it easier to do the math right so equals and remember we want the upper one first so our x is now 19 20 true right double check we wanted CDF of 19, and now we want the 13. Oops, forgot my equals. So now I want 13, comma, 20, comma, true. And now this cell is going to equal that cell minus that cell. And like before, around everything come on why won't you do it there we go four decimals so there's our answer four zero four one if we go and look at the solutions four zero four one okay it would be the exact same way in the calculator you would have to do the pdf of the 19 you'd have to do the pdf of uh, i'm sorry the cdf of the 19 the cdf of the 13 and then subtract those two numbers to get your answer and then the last one right the greater than 32 we already figured out that it's one minus the pdf of 31 sorry i keep saying that one minus the cdf of 31 Again, these are easier in Excel when you have to do any kind of math because if we do this one and we want 31 comma 20 comma true, and this is just going to equal 1 minus that. Again, we can go down, so 0 0.0081, 0 0.0081. All right, so hopefully these examples will show you how easy it is to use the Poisson distribution or poison as we like to say um, and how to do them in technology. Okay, hope that helps.